we will be tackling about geothermal power plant. So, throughout the history, uh, the first discovery of a geothermal power plant was during 1807. As Euro European settlers moved westward across the continent, they gravitated toward the springs of warmth and vitality. John Coulter was the first European to discover hot springs in 1807, leaving spring fed plants as first geothermal energy commerce. Well, throughout the history, next is the 1864. Homes and dwellings have been built near springs through the millennia to take advantage of the natural heat of these geothermal springs. It utilizes the natural heat of geothermal creation of hot lakes in La Grande, Oregon. During the 1904, Prince Piero Ginoli Conti invented the first geothermal power plant in Toscana, Italy. During 1930, greenhouse commercialization of geothermal energy began together with DHT. This commercial greenhouse use of geothermal energy is undertaken in Guay, Idaho. The operation uses a 1,000 foot well in 1926. In Klamath Falls, the operation develops the first download, uh, downhole heat exchanger to heat his house. In 1972, GEA, or Geothermal Energy Association, was founded. The association includes U.S. companies that develop geothermal resources worldwide for electrical power generation and direct heat use. So now, we will be talking what is geothermal. So geothermal is a type of renewable energy taken from the Earth's core. It's, it comes from heat generated during the original formation of the planet and the radioactive decay of materials. This thermal energy is stored in rocks and fluid in the center of the Earth. In a simple term, geo means Earth and thermal which read that literally means earth heat. So geothermal is a power generated by geothermal energy. Technologies in use include these types of power plants such as dry steam, flash steam, and binary cycle. Geothermal electricity generates is currently used in 26 countries while geothermal heating is in use in 70 countries geothermal power plants are used in order to generate electricity by the use of geothermal energy they essentially work the same as coal The main difference between the two is that coal is, uh, is a uh, burnt wood while nuclear power plant is a really active uh, plant. Both have heat source. Geothermal energy can heat, cool, and generate electricity. Geothermal can be used in a different ways, depending on the resource and technology chosen. Heating and cooling Heating and cooling buildings through geothermal heat pumps generating electricity through geothermal power plants and heating structures through direct use of applications. So there are some of advantages and disadvantages of geothermal. So what are the advantages of using geothermal? First, it is environmentally friendly. So what
what do we mean by environmentally friendly? So geothermal is more environmentally friendly than conventional fuel sources such as coal and other fuel, fossil fuels. In addition, uh, the carbon footprint of a geothermal power plant is low. There is some pollution associated with geothermal. This is relatively a minimal when compared to fossil fuels. Second is it is renewable. What do we mean by renewable? Renewable is a geothermal energy. Uh, it is a source of a renewable energy that will last until the earth is destroyed the sun around 5 to 5 billion years. The hot reservoir within the earth is naturally replenished, making it both renewable and sustainable. And third is huge potential. So what do we mean by huge potential? So worldwide energy a cons worldwide energy consumption is currently around 15 terawatts which is far from the total potential energy available from geothermal sources while we can currently use most reservoir there is hope that the number of uh, ex exploitable uh, geothermal resources will increase on will with ongoing research and development in the industry. It is currently estimated that geothermal power plants could provide between 0.0035 and 2 terawatts of power, which is very helpful when it comes to uh, using geothermal sources. And fourth is sustainable and stable. So geothermal provides a re reliable source of energy as compared to other renewable resources such as wind and solar power. So this is because the resource is always available uh, to be tapped into unlike, uh, unlike wind and solar energy. And next is It requires water temperatures uh, over 150 degrees to drive turbines. Alternatively, the temperature di difference between the surface and the ground source can be used. Due to the ground being uh, heat uh, being more resistant to seasonal heat changes than the air, it can act as heat resistant to seasonal It can act as a heat source with geothermal heat pump uh, with a high degree of accuracy. And number six is it is reliable. So energy generated from this resource is easy to calculate since it does not influence in the same way as other energy. This means we can predict the power output from a geothermal power plant with a high degree of accuracy. So, last, I know, seven is no fuel required. So, in a simple term, geothermal uses heat, which Earth has, Earth's core has heat. heat. So no fuel is required. Since geothermal energy is naturally occurring energy at the moment, meaning that new technologies are being created to improve the energy process. There are increasing number of projects to improve and grow this area of industry. 
With this rapid evolution, many of the current cons of geothermal energy will mitigate against. So, next is rapid evolution. There is a great deal of exploration into geothermal energy at the moment, meaning that new technologies are being created to improve the energy process. There are an increasing number of projects to grow and grow in this area of industry. With this rapid revolution, many of the current cons of the generation of geothermal energy will mitigate against. So, to repeat, no fossil, no fossil required because uh, fossil fuels that are finite resource which needs mining and otherwise extracting from earth. While rapid revolution, uh, it improves the technology uh, that grows in the area of extracting uh, geothermal energy. Uh, in that area, uh, it can provide. So now we will be talking about is what are the disadvantages of geothermal energy. So the disadvantage of geothermal energy it has a free of So, first disadvantage is location is restricted. The largest single disadvantage of geothermal is that it is location specific. Geothermal needs to be needs to be built in places where the energy is accessible, which means that some areas are not able to exploit this resource. Of course, uh, this is not a problem if you live in a place where geothermal energy is readily accessible, such as Iceland. So, why Iceland? Iceland has a, uh, a expand or uh, a wide area of reliable uh, energy which can be uh, easily be built by easily built by or create energy by a geothermal power plant so second is environmental side effects although uh, geothermal energy does not typically release greenhouse gases there are many Gases stored under Earth's surface, which is released into the atmosphere. During the year, while these gases are also released into the atmosphere, the rate increases near geothermal power plants. However, these gas emissions are still far lower than those associated with fossil fuel. So, uh, although geothermal is a, a natural source of, uh, of creating heat or creating energy the earth's surface can still be uh, have other radiation or other side effects of uh, gases because of the leaking of geothermal energy so the third one is earthquakes. So, geothermal energy also runs the risk of earthquakes. earthquakes. Why? Because they have a huge structure of industry uh, for digging the under the cores, the core of earth for extracting energy or heat. So this is due to alteration in the earth's structure as a result of digging. This problem is more 
uh, per prevalent prevalent with enhanced uh, geothermal power plant which pours water into the uh, earth's crust to open uh, it fissures to greater exploration of the resource however since most geothermal power plants are away from the population centers uh, the implication of these earthquakes are relatively minor so next is the high cost so of course geothermal power plants are very costly because they need uh, 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 big uh, machines to of course dig into the earth's core so geothermal energy is an expensive resource to tap into uh, with price tags ranging from around um, two, 2 to 7 million dollars for a plant with a 1 megawatt capacity however where the upfront costs are high uh, the outlay can be uh, recouped as part of a long-term investment Geothermal. Geo means earth and thermal means heat, which means earth, heat, it is simple meaning. So, thank you. A geothermal energy system consists of a water well, flasher, and a 15 megawatts turbine power. The pressurized groundwater at 7.5 MPa at 30 degrees Celsius leaves the well to enter the flasher maintained at 1.3 MPa. The flushed vapor passes through the separator and collector to enter the turbine as a saturated vapor at 1.3 MPa. The turbine exhausts at 1 bar. To find the A is X, B is a flow rate system, and C is groundwater. So the formula used in this problem is for moisture is H sub 1 is equals to HF plus X times HFG, while for working turbine is WT is equals to MS times H sub 3 minus H sub 4 while for steam flow rate and groundwater the formula is MS is equals to XMG First, let us know 
what are the major components of a geothermal power plant? Actually, there are seven major components of a geothermal power plant. These seven major components are the production well, the separator, the heat exchanger, the turbine, the condenser, the generator, and last is the injection well. These seven major components have its own function in the geothermal power plant. Commonsensical speaking, if one of these major components is to be removed, the geothermal power plant will not operate. As what I have said earlier, every major component have its own functions and that this function is significant to the power plant to operate efficiently. Now, let us talk about these seven major components and what are they and what do they do geothermal power plant. First major component that we are going to talk about is the production plant. strata for the purpose of sale, exchange, transfer or use by the owner or for the purpose of exchange, transfer, sale, or use by other persons. A production well also a source of steam. Production well have a depth of 3 km to 20 km. The wells can be located as far as 10 km to 14 km from the power plant. The steam that it produces can be moist or dry. If moist is produced, the steam will pass through the separator. After knowing the function of the production well in a geothermal power plant, let us now know talk about the second major component of the geothermal power plant, 
which is a separator. So, what does a separator do in a geothermal power plant? In areas of the world where steam or two-phase flow are the dominant sources of geothermal energy, it is vital to remove the fluid portion of the mixture from the well. Otherwise, salts and dissolved solids will cause scaling and corrosion of the turbine and related equipment. Combat damage to the turbine plants installs separators. The most important components of a geothermal power plant. Separators ensure only clean, dry steam enters the turbine. It is designed vertically. It is a steam divider for non-considerable gases, including hydrogen sulfide. Did you know that there are two common separator designs? The vertical cyclone and the horizontal separator. Both designs essentially work the same in that a high velocity two phase flow enters the separator in a spiral pattern. Next, Centrifugal force moves the fluid to the outer surface, therefore allowing steam to direct toward the outlet tube. The separator fluid then collects in the base of the separator or freestanding tank. With the level controlled by an external control valve, finally, the salts and solids are discarded and sent to a re-injection well or vent silencer. Both vertical cyclone and horizontal separator have a 99% or better separation efficiency rate. The third major component that we are going to talk about is the heat exchanger. Heat exchangers are systems that use a fluid to absorb heat from a hotter outside source without the fluid and hot source mixing together. Therefore, fluid that cold fluids leaves hot. Power plants use heat exchangers to specifically collect heat from hot waste gases to particularly get power, which is necessary to the power plant to operate with efficiency. After the heat exchanger, we have the fourth major component, which is the turbine. For additional information, did you know that the first turbine was invented in 1888? The first known U.S. wind turbine created for electricity Production is built by inventor Charles Brush to provide electricity for his mansion in Ohio. Now, let us back.
back to our topic. Turbines are used in wind power, hydro power, in heat engines, and for propulsion. This turbine is turned by the steam that passes through it. This turbine is connected to an electric generator which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy as the turbine rotates, transforming the heat from the earth into useful electricity. Power plants use steam to produce electricity. The steam comes from reservoirs of hot water found a few miles or more below the Earth's surface. The steam rotates a turbine that actives, activates a generator, which produces electricity. This is how turbines are used in the geothermal power plant. Usually, there are three types of turbines we can locate in a geothermal power plant. There is usually a high pressure turbine at one end followed by an intermediate pressure turbine and finally one two or three low pressure turbines and the shaft that connects to the generator the fifth major components we are going to talk about after the turbine is the condenser. Did you know that condenser may be classified into two main types? First are those in which the coolant and condensing vapor are brought into direct contact, also known as direct contact condensers and second are those in which the coolant and condensate stream are separated by a solid surface usually a tube wall also known as surface condensers a condenser pulls the steam which then condenses into liquid water. The cooled liquid water is then sent back into the ground to either resume the boiling process in dry steam plants or replace the natural heated aquifer in flash steam plants. The condenser's main purpose is to maximize turbine efficiency by maintaining a proper vacuum by condensing steam, removing dissolved non-condensable gases from the condensate and conserving the condensate for re-injection or as feed water for the cooling tower. As the operating pressure of the condenser is lowered, vacuum is increased. The enthalpy drop of the expanding steam in the turbine will also increase. This will increase the amount of available work from the turbine and thus electrical output. By lowering the condenser operating pressure, the following will occur. 1. Increase
increase turbine output. 2. Increase plant efficiency. And 3. Reduce steam flow for a given plant output. It is therefore very advantageous to operate the condenser at the lowest possible pressure, highest vacuum. After the condenser, we have the generator, which is also one of the major components of geothermal power plant. Another additional information. Did you know that the first generator was a steam turbine generator built by Sir Charles Parsons? And that this generator have a thermal efficiency of just 1.6% in 1884. There are also three types of geothermal energy generator. The dry steam, the flash steam, and the binary cycle. A generator is best described as a machine by which mechanical energy is transformed into electrical energy. The coiled wires are used in a generator spin inside a magnetic field which causes an electric current to flow through the wire. It generates 50 to 600 MW of power when built on top of a geyser. It requires no additional input. Power output of geothermal generators fluctuates and is affected by the purity of the geyser. When a steam turbine is connected to a generator, it produces electricity and is known as a steam turbine driven generator. system built in them make them work safely and with greater efficiency. Steam turbine driven generators are commonly used in solar thermal electric power plants. Coal, geothermal, nuclear, waste incineration plants and natural gas power plants. After the generator, we have the injection well, which is the last major component of a geothermal power plant. While the production well is used to extract oil or gas from the subsurface, injection wells are used to safely dispose of waste generated from those production operations or, in some cases, to increase production from nearby production wells. It is the well that is drilled in the earth to inject the condensed water again into the earth's crust. So, what is the main purpose of an injection well? An injection well is drilled for the safe disposal of geothermal fluids, whose total dissolved solid concentrations in the state can reach 250,000 parts per million, about seven times higher than sea water. 
some production wells are converted to injection wells. Besides safe fluid disposal, injection wells provide the following benefits. Subsidence control. Subsidence can be a significant problem in Southern California's Imperial Valley. Most of the area is farmland, and even a few feet of subsidence can have serious consequences. Ground level surveys are performed annually and fluids are injected to compensate for any elevation changes. Enhanced Recovery After 1986, production at the Geysers Geothermal Field began to decline and in 1998, treated sewage effluent from Lake Country Lake County was piped to the field to inject and produce a steam. Since the injection began, the production decline has slowed significantly. Injection wells have a range of uses including storing CO2, Disposing of waste, enhancing oil production, mining, preventing salt water intrusion. Injection wells are also divided into six groups or classes. Classes 1 to 4 and 6 include wells with similar functions, construction, and operating features. This allow consistent technical requirements to be applied to these well classes. Class 5 wells are those that do not meet the description of any other well class. Wells in class 5 do not necessarily have similar functions, construction, or operating features. In 2010, EPA finalized regulations for geological sequestration of CO2. This final rule created a new class of wells. Class 6 Class 6 wells are used solely for the purpose of long-term storage of CO2. Mathematical approach Sample problem a geothermal plant has a, com has a combined efficiency of 79%. Groundwater at 175 bar and 280 degrees Celsius leaves the well entering the flasher maintained at 14 bar. The steam collected enters the turbine at 14 bar and exhaust at 1 atm. If one well discharge 150,000 kgr of hot water, how many wells are required if it has an output of 15 MW? Find the x and the amount of water required. Thank you.
was an imperfect legitimate wisdom to produce power from the ship of the energy that is quite dark and mild to the underground reserve to access the steam and hot water which can then be used to drive turbines connected to electricity generators so that means uh, uh, it, it is dug uh, deep down uh, which is connected to a um, into a turbines that produces electricity generators for uh, producing power. So in geothermal power plant, hot water is pumped from deep underground through a well under high pressure. When the water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped which causes the water to turn into steam. The steam spins a turbine which is connected to a generator that produces uh, electricity. So, step by step, uh, hot water is pumped from deep underground to a well under a high pressure. Uh, when the water reaches the surface, uh, the pressure is dropped which causes the water to turn into steam. Uh, when the steam turns, uh, it spins a, ter a turbine which is connected to a generator to produce electricity. Then the steam goes up in a cooling tower and condenses back to water. Uh, the cooled water is pumped back into the earth to begin the process again. So, there are types of technology is still effective today at currently in use of uh, lasers in Northern California. Uh, the world's largest uh, single source of geothermal power is uses the dry, dry steam that is naturally produced in the ground. This steam travels from the production well to the surface through a tur turbine and after transferring energy to the turbine uh, it condenses and it is injected uh, back into the earth so in this process uh, it is of all the types of geothermal power plants uh, this is the most used uh, power plant because uh, it is the most uh, convenient to use so the core of the earth, uh, which is the heat travels through a red pipe, a well steam, is well the blue pipe is for water vapor. Uh, the heat travels which provides steam, which is called the dry steam. So the stream travels uh, through a generates electricity um, back and forth uh, while a flash cycle steam it is the most common and most um, sufficient that uh, that is used in geothermal power plants so in this method uh, water must be over 180 degrees celsius and under its own pressure, it flows upwards through the well. 
this is a lower temperature than the dry steam plants have. As it uh, pressure decreases, some of the water flashes to steam, which is passed uh, through the turbine section. water from the deep well to the earth that convert it to steam to drive generator turbines so here the steam generates uh, the turbine to rotate and like a uh, dry steam it uses uh, uh, heat and water vapor so uh, when the steam cools it condenses to water separated to organic fluid and direct heat use. Uh, the steam uh, flows to the turbine and rotates and then condenses to the water vapor and repeats itself to generate electricity. So both uh, and flash cycle steam um, uh, produces electricity but have different uh, cycles of so the last type of geothermal power plant is the uh, binary cycle. Uh, binary cycle uh, use lower temperature of water. Uh, a secondary loop containing a fluid with a low boiling point. Uh, the water from the well flows to a heat exchanger and vaporizes due to its low boiling point. Uh, it is then Pass through a turbine, uh, accomplishing the same task as a steam. So, binary cycles transfer uh, the heat from the geothermal hot water to another liquid. So, the heat causes uh, the second liquid to turn to steam, which is used to drive the generator turbine. While the hot water from the production going to the heat. converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. So in conclusion, um, the principle and workings of a geothermal is that uh, uh, it dugs deep down into the earth's core to, to get heat and there are two pipes which is water vapor and for the heat to produce steam to rotate the turbine and produce electricity to the uh, generators. So, so these three types of geothermal power plant have different uh, cycles. 
the most common is the dry steam, while the most used is the flux cycle steam. And the cycle is more complicated because it has uh, a lot of things to do uh, in using binary cycle. So that's it.